I'm freaking super excited today, dudes. I freaking deleted these biatches and made them work with the sensors. This is some crazy ish. Hey, what's up, folks? My name's Clay with the Clayway here in Grand Rapids in Muskegon, Michigan. And if you know me or you've ever seen my show, I show you some brilliant things that you can do with Sprinter vans, like how to install a resistor to bypass the swirl flaps for a shorter period of time because you still got EGR fluid and gases going through the intakes, which isn't very good. And when that carbon goes through there, when you have the resistor in there, it creates other issues that you're not seeing. Go ahead and look up how much a particulate filter costs for one of these. Then ECM deleting, there's no bypass for that. But I show you how to get back home and get that thing out of limp mode. Maybe you've seen my swirl flap trick where I show you how to use fishing line to install the swirl motor without removing the intakes or the turbo. Or maybe you've seen that stuff where I remove intakes and turbos and stuff. I show you everything that you need to know about Sprinter intakes and the stuff that you can do on them. And maybe you've seen my videos on cleaning intakes. Yes, these are used. Where I take these, I clean them, and then I put some of my Clayway Super Slick Spray on them and make them somewhat resilient to the carbon that goes through the engine. Well, I've got an evolution to that process. And I've actually tackled and created a situation where you can delete the swirl flaps, still have the engine recognize that the swirl flaps are there. Now this adds a great amount of benefit. So not only do you get clean intakes that will be a little bit more impervious to the carbon buildup from your EGR, but you're also going to get deleted swirl flaps, which should in turn give you more top end torque, better fuel economy, and just never have to take the intakes out again. At least that's the hopes anyways. It certainly won't be from what I did. So first off, we take the intakes, we go through the cleaning process, and now a lot of people just assume that you can take a power washer and you can clean these things, but the real problem is you can't get down inside this area right here, which is trapped inside here, and that's where the real carbon lives. Obviously, we got carbon buildup on our flaps. And mounds of it on the inside. But with my process, I can get rid of pretty much 99% of all this carbon buildup. If there was ever a situation where I couldn't get the flaps to move, now I have a way to remove them affordably and make them last forever. But I've devised a way that I can get down through all of that stuff and allow these to still work properly and function without removing the swirl flaps, if that's what you're looking for. And I've found over the years that there's a lot of people that confuse a crazy ass sense of humor with ignorance or stupidity. But most of the stuff that I do is genius. And I personally think you have to be a little bit crazy to be a little bit of a genius as well. I mean, not that I'm anybody great or anything like that, but most geniuses were a little bit crazy. Let's think about Tesla, Albert Einstein. Don't get it twisted. I'm not anywhere near their stature. I just needed somebody that you would know of to compare myself to because some of the stuff I do is pretty trick for what I know. I'm still very ignorant though. They were definitely nuts though. Oh my. What happens is, is people will contact me about the cleaning and they find out that it's about 200 bucks and they're like, oh, oh, I can do that myself, oh God. I'm here to tell you, quite a few of them have also messaged me back and let me know that their vehicle went back in limp mode a couple of weeks. And I'm talking about the ones that didn't have so much pride that they couldn't allow themselves to do that because I'm sure there were many more. Because when you don't get that carbon out of the pen, it's definitely going back into lip mode again. And then the real fun begins moving the intakes again. You're not gonna do it with a grin. If we look over here, you can see a functioning system. Doesn't have the swirl flaps in there. So, because this system works independently from any carbon, meaning that this is all blocked off right here. No, it's not welded because if you weld them, you'll warp them. Yeah, I tried welding them. It didn't turn out so well. I actually bring them over to my machine shop area using my bridge port to mill them out correctly and make my bracket. I ended up and 
I made a mechanism that is fail proof to heat and everything else, allowing these to move back and forth and function independently of any other mechanism. Really what I wanted to do was create a pedestal that this could sit on, but with the elephant hose and the turbo being right there, it seemed more rational since people were already sending these to me for cleaning to just delete them. So that's an extra added bonus of the deleting process or of the cleaning process. And like in my other video, which you can click down in the link below, you can see where I clean these things. You can send these to me, I'll delete them and they'll never lock up again. I didn't make a video of the actual process for a couple different reasons. YouTube videos don't pay shit. And most of the time I'm giving 80% of my time to people for free. There's very few things that I can capitalize on. And when I figure out something extraordinary, which I most of the time share, I try to make a little bit of money to keep my show growing and keep it going. So hopefully when you're helping me, I'm helping people just like you all over the world for absolutely free. And I wish that was the only way it ever had to be. Unfortunately though, everything can always be free. Even though with the delete option, it's probably still half the price of a new set of intakes. So if you wanna reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, I can help you not only with your Sprinter, but a lot of other things. The only thing that I really won't ever try to help you with is your baby mama drama. You need to keep that to yourself. And them pubes you found in them biscuits the other day at the Waffle House. I don't need to know about that. I'm good. And I do that for free, by the way. I answer questions all day, every day to people all over the world about Sprinter vans. I don't know it all, but, you know, I know a considerable amount anyways. And some of them stuff I'm just plain and simply ignorant. Not too terribly. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and you see something that's super trick that nobody's done yet. Well until me me a shout out we also need to thank kelly ham from knoxville tennessee echelon bicycles he's a great dude uh i had to contact him and this the reason that we ended up making these was because his were not repairable they were replaceable for about 700 dollars each but not repairable so I told him, hey man, what about if I come up with a process to get rid of them swirl flaps? I've been wanting to do it for a long time and in my brain, I thought it would work, but I had to wait for a situation where I couldn't actually make them work properly to make this a necessity without spending a ton of money. And since he was already spending the same amount of money anyways, he was like, go ahead, I'll give it a try. I didn't guarantee anything, but I can tell you for certain that these things will work and they'll last the lifetime of the vehicle. So if you're ever in the Knoxville, Tennessee area and you need a bike or something like that, no, he didn't sponsor this video. Check him out. He's a terribly great dude. And I'm sure you and me and thousands are up of other people are going to agree. If it wasn't for him, this probably wouldn't have happened for a long time. Remember, no matter what it is in life, if anyone else can do it, I promise you. You can do it too. God bless, folks. Have the best of days.